between a man and disbelief and shirk is abandoning the prayer. And this is in uh, Sahih Muslim number 82. Narrated in the Book of Faith on the authority of Jabir bin Abdullah and on the authority of Buraida bin Al-Hasib who said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, the covenant which is between us and them is the prayer and whoever abandoned it has disbelieved. The covenant which is between us and them is the prayer and whoever abandoned it has disbelieved. And this is, can be found in a tirmidhi number 2621 and an nisai number 464 and Ahmed uh, book 5, 346 and 355. What is meant by disbelieved here is that which takes one out of the fold of Islam because the Prophet وسلم, he declared the prayer to be what separates the believers from the disbelievers. And it is well known that the community of disbelief is not the community of Islam. Therefore, whoever does not fulfill this covenant is one of the disbelievers. It is reported in Sahih Muslim on the authority of Umm Salama, may Allah be pleased with her, that the Prophet وسلم, he said, there will be rulers whom you will know and censor, censor. And whoever knows them will be innocent of them. And whoever censors them will be saved. But whoever accepted them and followed them, they said, Shall we not fight them? He saw Salam replied, No, as long as they pray. And this is in Muslim number 1854. There's also the hadith of Auf bin Malik in which he said that the Prophet Sallallahu said, the best of your leaders are those whom you love and who love you, who pray for you and for whom you pray. And the most evil of your leaders are those whom you hate and who hate you and whom you curse and who curse you. They said, O Messenger of Allah, shall we not oppose them with the sword? He said, No, as long as they establish the prayer among you. And this is in uh, Sahih Muslim again, number 1855. In these two ahadith, there is evidence that leaders should be opposed and fought with the sword if they do not establish prayer. And it is not permissible to oppose the leaders or fight them unless they are guilty of open disbelief, for which we have evidence from Allah the Most High, according to hadith of Ubadah bin Samit, who said, Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa called us to Allah and we swore an oath of allegiance to Him, including an oath to hear and obey, whether in times of activity or times of laziness, in times of difficulty and times of ease, even if he did not give us all of our rights and that we not oppose any order which he gave us. And he said, unless you see open disbelief for which there is evidence. Unless you see open disbelief for which there is evidence from Allah. And this can be found in Sahih al-Bukhari, number 7056 and 7076. Based upon this, their rejection, their rejection of prayer, which the Prophet ﷺ made a justification for opposing them and fighting them, with the sword is open disbelief, for which there is evidence from Allah. It has not been reported in the Book of Allah or the Sunnah that the one who abandons prayer is not a disbeliever, or that he is a believer, or that he will enter paradise, or that he will not enter the fire or the like. And the intent, the intent of what has been narrated in this matter are those texts which prove the virtue of Tawheed. The testimony that none is worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and the reward of it. And they, the narrations, are either tied to a description which precludes abandoning prayer or were narrated in particular circumstances in which a person was excused for abandoning prayer or they are general and are tried to evidences or, and are tied to evidences which prove the disbelief of one who abandons prayer. Because the evidences for the disbelief of one who abandons prayer are specific, and the specific takes precedence over the general, as is well known in Usul al Fiqh and Mustal al Hul Hadith. If someone said, Is it not permissible to restrict these narrations which prove the disbelief of one who aban abandons prayer to one who rejects the obligation of prayer? We say this is not permissible because there are two difficulties in this. The first difficulty is the negation of the description which the legislator Allah has tied to the legal judgment. Because the legislator has tied the legal judgment to the disbelief of one who abandons the prayer, 
regardless of whether he denies the obligation or not. And he has linked the brotherhood in religion to establishing prayer without the acknowledgement that it is obligatory. And Allah the Most High did not say, but if they, re quote, but if they repent and acknowledge the obligation of prayer, end quote. And the Prophet Wasallam did not say, Quote, between a man and shirk is kufr, is a rejection of prayer's obligation. So whoever rejected its obligation has committed an act of disbelief. Quote, and if this was what Allah the Most High and His Messenger وسلم, intended, then understanding it as meaning renouncing it would be in conflict with the evidence in the Quran. Allah the Most High says, وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ تِبِعَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ What means, and we have sent down to you the book, the Qur'an, as an exposition of everything. This is Surah Nahal, Surah 16, Ayah 89. And Allah the Most High said, addressing His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّنَ إِلَيْهِمْ what means, and we have also sent down unto you, O Muhammad وسلم, the reminder and the advice, meaning the Qur'an, that you may explain clearly to men what is sent down to them. This is also in Surah Al-Nahl, Ayah 44. The second difficulty is giving a description, which the legislator has not given a place in the legal ruling. For the rejection of the obligation of the five prayers necessitates a ruling of disbelief on one who is not excused due to his ignorance in the matter, whether or not he prays. And if a person prayed the five prayers fulfilling all of its conditions, its pillars, its obligations, and its preferred acts, but he denied its obligation without any excuse, he would be a disbeliever, even though he had not abandoned it. Thus, it is clear from this that confining these narrations to those who abandon prayer because they reject its obligation is not correct. And that the truth is that he who abandons prayer is a disbeliever, whose disbelief takes him out of the fold of Islam, as is made perfectly clear in the hadith narrated by Ibn Abi Hatim in his Sunan on the authority of Urbada bin as in which he said, Allah's Messenger advised us, do not associate any partners with Allah and do not deliberately abandon the prayer because whoever abandons prayer deliberately has left the fold of Islam. See Majmu'ah Zawad, Zawaid, number 714. Part of it was also recorded by Ibn Majah. Also, if we confine it to abandoning prayer due to denial of its obligation, there would be no benefit in the special reference to prayer in the narrations because this ruling is a general in prayer, zakat, and hajj, whose obligation in the religion is known. So whoever abandoned a single prayer, denying its obligation, he would be a disbeliever, unless he was excused by ignorance. Just as the disbelief of one who abandons the prayer conforms with the evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah, it conforms with the evidence of logic. How could a person have faith when he abandons a prayer which is a pillar of the religion and the encouragement to perform it has been reported in a manner which necessitates the acceptance of every logical believer that he must perform it and hasten to do so? And the threat of punishment for one who abandons it has been reported in a manner which necessitates the acceptance of every logical believer that he must be aware of abandoning it and losing it. And abandoning it therefore means that the one who abandons it has no faith. As for the saying of the companions, the majority of them, indeed, more than one reported that all of them regarded the one who abandons prayer as a disbeliever. Abdullah bin Shakik said the companions of the Prophet وسلم, did not regard the abandonment of anything to be disbelief except prayer. This is in uh, Tirmidhi number 26, 22. And Imam Ishaq bin Rahaway, the famous scholar, He said, it has been authentically reported from the Prophet wasallam that the one who abandons prayer is a disbeliever. Likewise, the view of the people of knowledge from the time of the Prophet wasallam until our time has been that whoever deliberately abandoned prayer until after its time had elapsed without any legal excuse is a disbeliever. Ibn Hazm mentioned that it has been reported from Umar, Abdurrahman bin Auf, Mu'ad bin Jabal, Abu Huraira, and others from among the companions. And he said, Quote, and we know of no one among the companions who contradicts them. End quote. This was reported from him by Al Mundiri in Al Targhab wa Tarhib, who added the following companions <coughs> to the list Abdullah bin Mas'ud, Abdullah bin Abbas, and Abu Al Darda. And he said, 
quote, and from among other than the companions, there is Ahmed bin Hanbal, Ishaq bin Rahawi, Abdullah bin Mubarak, and Nakahi, Al Hakam bin Utayba, Ayyub al Shaktiyani, Abu Dawood, Al Tayalasi, Tayalisi, Abu Bakr ibn Abi Shayba, Zuhair bin Harb, and others. Unquote. I say, this is what is well known from the madhab of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, and is one of the two sayings attributed to Al Shafi'i, as mentioned by Ibn Kathir in his tafsir of the words of Allah the Most High. <clears throat> 